Hi, my name is Dr. Sanjay Tricker from Trick One Aesthetics, Mayfair, and I'm here today to talk to you about the PRP facial or the vampire facial. So what is PRP or platelet-rich plasma and how is it used in clinic? So the process of this is we see a patient and we take blood from them like a normal blood sample through the arm and we put this in something called a centrifuge which is this device here. So the centrifuge essentially spins around really really fast for about 10 minutes and it separates the blood out into its different layers. One of those layers of blood is the platelet-rich plasma and that is the layer that we can re-inject into certain areas, whether it's the face, the skin, the hair, to have different effects based on what it is we're trying to achieve. So with the vampire facial, that one in particular is lots of injections within the face. Within the platelet-rich plasma, we've got a lot of different stem cells and growth factors that are essentially gonna rejuvenate the skin and regenerate the skin. So there's a multitude of growth factors that are involved in rejuvenating the skin. I'm just gonna bring up a list of five of the most important ones. Essentially, these work together to combine to improve collagen synthesis, to tighten the skin overall, and to basically give a better blood supply through new blood vessels to improve the skin nourishment to the outer layer of your skin. All of this together helps promote healthier skin overall with more collagen and better tissue remodeling. So simply put, the impact of this on the skin is over time, as the skin ages, it loses collagen, it loses elastin, it loses hydration. Through the mixture of growth factors and stem, cell and stem cells, we can rejuvenate this process to improve fine lines and wrinkles, improve hydration, improve the overall texture of the skin to give it a bit of a glow. So PRP is quite different to other treatments that we can do which have a similar overall impact. So some of the things that are going to be comparable are like injectable skin boosters like a Redensity one or a Profilo, which we've got some videos for as well, prescription skincare, using medical devices to resurface the skin such as the Morpheus 8. But the thing that's really unique and special about PRP is we're using your own blood. So for a patient who doesn't want something that's synthetic like a hyaluronic acid dermal filler being injected into them, this is actually your own blood. So the chance of a patient having an adverse reaction to it or not responding well to it is virtually nil. This means the safety profile of the treatment is really, really high. And that's quite important because there are certain areas like the skin just under and around the eye, for example, the eyelid, the upper eyelid or the lower eyelid or just below the eye where the skin is really thin. And these typically aren't areas we would look to improve through hyaluronic acid, um, but these are areas where we can get more skin rejuvenation to have a safe improvement for patients. So in terms of the side effects of the treatment, this is essentially going to be lots of little injections in the face. I wouldn't say it's a painful treatment because we use a lot of numbing cream in the area to make it more comfortable for the patient and the needles that we use are really, really tiny, which helps. In terms of uh, the downtime, generally it's going to be two to three days of a little bit of mild redness um, or mild swelling. Generally speaking, whenever we do any injectable treatment, we always say that it can be bruising and swelling for one to two weeks. But having said that, with this procedure, it's very low risk for bruising and swelling. So whilst, um, whilst it is possible for people to get bruising and swelling, it's not very likely. So the aftercare for this treatment, again, is quite straightforward because essentially we just don't want to touch it or rub it. We don't want to introduce an infection into an open area. The healing process is quite swift for this anyway. There isn't really too much that you need to avoid after PRP because overall it's a really safe treatment. In terms of courses of treatments, usually PRP is done over kind of a period of time of maybe three or four courses or three to six courses generally speaking about three to six weeks apart. And then for maintenance, people can have one course every six months or every 12 months. So in terms of if PRP is the best option for you, that's a difficult question to answer from here. Obviously the best thing to do is to have a consultation with your doctor to talk through all the options. Generally when it comes to skincare, I always say, it depends on the patient because it depends on what their concerns are along with what type of person they are. Some people might really like everyday at-home prescription skincare or non-prescription skincare, which they can slowly see an improvement in their skin with over time. Some people might like something a bit more like a hydrofacial, which is a medical grade facial, like a deep clean of their face. 
For other people who want to go for something a bit more aggressive, an injectable treatment such as PRP or a skin booster are going to be a good option. The main differences between the two are with skin boosters, you're actually adding some hyaluronic acid into the tissue directly, whereas with, with the PRP, it's more a case of the, tapping into the regeneration through growth factors and, uh, and through the stem cells. So in terms of which one's better, it, it depends on what the main concern is. If a patient's got a little bit of sagginess or a bit of heaviness and they want a bit of a lift, potentially Profilo might be something more suitable for a patient. If the patient's got a, a bit more of an issue with texture or with scarring or with a bit of pigmentation, I might opt for something a little bit more like Redensity 1. Or if the patient wants to do something that's going to be the most natural almost, I would go for something like PRP because it's just using the patient's own blood and it's got the, the lowest risk of, uh, of complications or side effects. So they've all got a position for something like this. Then you've got more aggressive treatments such as medical devices like a radiofrequency microneedling device which is going to be a lot more significant for overall remodeling of the skin tissue um, within the face. So thank you very much for watching our video on PRP today. We've got another one talking specifically more so about how PRP is used for hair thickening or hair loss. So you can give that a look if it's something you're interested in. We've also got videos on the skin boosters like Redensity 1 and Profilo where we go a little bit deeper into how they work specifically, along with something more aggressive like the Morpheus 8 for skin resurfacing. So I hope you found it really educational and informative and please do like, share and subscribe to our channel and we hope to see you again. Thank <laughs> you.